El Centro Galego de Arte Contemporánea de Santiago de Compostela está íntimamente eh, ligado al Camino de Santiago y este año 2021, Xacobeo, eh, era lógico que hubiera una mm, referencia y desde luego una relectura del peregrinar, del camino y de Santiago. Eh, para ello eh, era imprescindible una figura que eh, precisamente hubiera tratado eh, el caminar como obra, como hecho estético y eh, no había ninguna más precisa que la figura de James Fulton. Eh, este es un proyecto que se titula eh, Caminando hacia el oeste, Walking East, y es un proyecto en el que el artista empieza en Finisterre, en Fisterra, y inicia ese camino de Santiago a la inversa, hacia el este, eh, primero eh, pasando por Santiago, más tarde eh, por, las, eh, por las vías habituales del camino francés, hasta llegar a Pamplona y más allá hasta Endaya. Por eso es un proyecto que ha sido eh, realizado con la participación del Museo de la Universidad de Navarra de Pamplona, eh, que comparte eh, con Santiago precisamente el hecho de ser un espacio que pertenece al camino. Es un lugar, la propia universidad, el propio museo, por donde eh, pasan los peregrinos y sellan eh, su cartilla. En esta exposición, por tanto, lo que hay es una eh, relectura del caminar, del paisaje y de la naturaleza. Eh, fundamentalmente, eh, la importancia de James Fulton es, estriba precisamente en el hecho de caminar, la importancia que tiene como eh, acción el caminar. El proyecto de exposición que tenemos en estos momentos en el CEGA, eh, de la obra de James Fulton, se basa primero en un proyecto específico que ha hecho con un recorrido para esta exposición, un proyecto que arranca en Finisterre, que pasa por Santiago, llega a Pamplona y luego va hasta Endaya. Este recorrido tan peculiar obedece a que en los últimos trabajos que está haciendo James Fulton en España, está tratando de enlazar con inicios o finales de otros proyectos que había hecho en otros momentos. ¿no? Pues si había hecho el de el Duero hasta el Ebro, en el 2016 hace uno que es desde la desembocadura del Ebro a otro punto que había quedado suelto. ¿no? Y creo que en ese contexto es donde se inscribe este proyecto. ¿vale? Junto al proyecto específico que ha realizado para, para esta ocasión, tenemos una sala con proyectos desarrollados fuera de España, en otra tenemos proyectos desarrollados en España y luego, por último, tenemos una parte que la componen la obra seriada que él suele realizar junto con eh, la las mm, esculturas de madera, los dibujos o eh, procesos estampados. Creo que es importante eh, reconocer que toda esta obra, junto con los murales que hay en cada sala, conforman un todo que creo que nos ayuda a comprender que James Fulton no es un fotógrafo. James Fulton es un artista que conjuga dos diríamos, de sus grandes pasiones, que es el arte y caminar y que en ese, en ese, a partir de esos conceptos la obra de James Fulton no sería solo una obra fotográfica, sino que es, no es una obra fotográfica que intenta documentar o que intenta representar lo que son sus viajes. La obra de James lo que intenta es transmitir sus emociones, sus vivencias al realizar esa... Eh, diríamos, vertiente artística que ha elegido él, que es el caminar. ¿no? Creo que es muy interesante eh, conocer a partir de estos parámetros la obra de James Fulton y que nos 
eh, ayuda a comprender que es un artista más amplio que lo que supondría encasillarlo como un fotógrafo. Y dentro de esto, la obra de James Fulton, o a James Fulton, en su obra fotográfica, no le interesa tanto la técnica como eh, eh, los elementos que transmiten esas fotos. ¿eh? Él no es fotógrafo y él nunca se autodenomina fotógrafo ni que tenga nada que ver con la foto. Él utiliza la fotografía para expresar aquellos conceptos y aquellas emociones y aquellas vivencias que tiene en, en los procesos de las, de las caminatas que realiza. ¿no? En esa línea, yo creo que eh, con la arquitectura del museo, el poder contar con la arquitectura de este museo y con las obras de las que hemos dispuesto para esta ocasión, que hay obras procedentes de de su colección y del de el fondo de la galería, pero está también el Reina Sofía, otros coleccionistas privados, está la Fundación Cerezales, está el Museo Jerga de Alvear, la colección Inelcom de Madrid, está la colección Peramor al Art de Valencia, y con toda esa obra que los distintos las distintas instituciones y galería disponen, hemos podido conformar este proyecto, que es un proyecto amplio, que, con, como he dicho, con esa disposición arquitectónica de los espacios, nos ayuda a configurar unas relaciones, diríamos, eh, muy dependientes de los murales con los diferentes tipos de obra que están alojadas en cada uno de los espacios. En mi opinión, un elemento diferenciador también en esta exposición es el que hayamos podido mostrar las ediciones. Las ediciones son unas obras de James Fulton que no tienen el mismo carácter que las fotografías, puesto que son obras reproductibles, hay una edición de 50 o de 10 eh, normalmente, y no tienen ese carácter de obras únicas que tienen normalmente sus fotografías, aunque en algunas haya fotografías, pero eh, se percibe inmediatamente que no se le ha enmarcado de madera de James, es otros enmarcados de aluminio o de, o de madera pintada, que nos mm, determina que son otro tipo de obra. Esa obra normalmente se ve muy poco y muchas de estas obras son concebidas a posteriori de, eh, de, los, de las caminatas, ¿no? tanto si son caminatas urbanas, como puede ser Slow Walk este, o pueden ser estos dibujos eh, puntillistas ahí con esos dibujos. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué están? Bueno, que nosotros creíamos que era muy importante darle protagonismo a este tipo de obra, así como a las esculturas de madera. Y es muy interesante eh, poder mm, fijarse en estas obras y relacionarlas en el entorno que están con el, el mural. ¿no? Es decir, y eso es un tema muy importante para mí de cómo instala uh, su obra James Fulton. ¿no? Es, decir, es una acción que le corresponde a él, es decir, también, primero porque creo que el papel del comisario es un papel de mediador, de colaborador con el artista, que lo que hace es, es un facilitador de, para potenciar el discurso del artista. Cuando el artista está, el artista decide, el comisario le ayuda a, a, en algún momento, pero creo que eh, eh, si no estuviese él, yo haría otro montaje totalmente diferente. Posiblemente ahora no, después de estar tantos días con él, pero eh, el artista intenta ir relacionando las diferentes piezas con el entorno. ¿no? Si tenemos esta pieza, este mural, con ese símbolo ahí central japonés, eh, luego nos damos cuenta que ese símbolo aparece en diferentes piezas, ¿no? con lo cual el, el interés y el sentido de que esta pieza esté alojada aquí o aquella obra esté allí, porque tienen relación con estos murales. ¿no? Entonces, creo que en ese sentido es muy importante eh, un poco discernir esos pequeños detalles, ¿no? como 
eh, por qué está aquella pieza allí tan alta, ¿no? Pero que es, eh, o por qué eh, están la, los mapas a la entrada, que un poco, o los gráficos, porque ya determinan qué es lo que vamos a ver, un, parte de sus caminos ¿no? en toda la instalación. Y creo que eso es eh, muy importante para intuir cuáles son los intereses del artista a la hora de generar este tipo de arte y de cómo lo instala. De hecho, para James, el proyecto se inicia cuando empieza a concebir que va a hacer el viaje y termina en, con la instalación. Es todo un tema que tiene que ver con los días que va a caminar, con la información que va a recoger, cómo la va a presentar, cómo la va a enmarcar y cómo la va a instalar. It is a privilege to make an exhibition here at SIGAC in Santiago uh, because I call myself a, a walking artist. Everything that I make, that I make, uh, that is seen in this exhibition is the result of uh, walks, different walks that I've made in different locations. And the privilege here for a walking artist is the proximity to the Camino de Santiago, which is a few hundred meters from this building. So, <clears throat> to put my work into a kind of uh, perspective, I uh, have these maps. And on this map, in 1971, I walked across the neck of England, 1971, a long time ago. And then, two years later, 1973, I walked from northeast Scotland to southwest England. So, gradually, all these lines have developed, and more and more lines, and including the line which is indicated here, which is the Camino de Santiago, and this point is, in fact, where we are now, Santiago. But this map um, shows land, which is white, and blue, which is sea. There are no border lines, so there are no national border lines, and I can also say I did not vote for Brexit. This is a geometric map of this map, which is more like a normal map of Uh, the Iberian Peninsula, uh, France is not mentioned, uh, Portugal is not mentioned, Spain is not identified. And this, this is the, the line that I walked uh, this year, 2021, but I also have walked on the Camino in 2005 uh, and also 2001, but not the complete long distance uh, in 2005, because in 2005 I turned south at Lagrano. This is Lagrano on the Camino. So people say, well, what kind of art uh, is this artist making? What is this art about? So I say that uh, I call myself a walking artist. That means that I specialize in walking. I, don't, I do not make walks and also other art like sculpture, land art, performance art art with different kinds of mediums. I'm not interested in the issue of mediums. Somebody says, are you a painter? No, 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 I'm not a painter. I'm not a land artist. I'm not a landscape photographer. I have no interest in mediums. What I'm interested in is in, is in the walking experience. So in art history, there is a kind of a collision between uh, experience on the one side and mediums, art mediums, on the other side. Walking offers a great opportunity to become acquainted with nature. So what is really important in 2021 is the issue of how are children going to relate to nature because the children of today are the people who are going to have to be looking after the planet in the future. So if children are endlessly looking into smartphones, they will learn nada, nothing about nature. You have to put the phone aside or even throw it away. And then you start walking and you pay attention to what you can see, what you can smell, the sounds, small birds. Then we have what we call insignificant insects. So the adult says, ah, I don't like the look of that spider. Squash, kill the spider. No, pay attention to the life of the spider. You can make a smartphone any day of the week in a factory. You cannot make a spider in a factory.
Th this wall work is about a walk I made across Honshu, the island of Honshu in Japan in 1988. I was extremely lucky that when I was on the crater rim of Mount Fuji, um, there was only myself and one other man. And uh, I slept on the crater rim facing uh, east, facing the sunrise. So I saw the sunrise from the, the crater rim summit of Mount Fuji. Mount Fuji doesn't normally just have two people on the top. Very often I have read that the statistics for Mount Fuji are something like 300,000 or more than 300,000 people going up there in a summer, and it, which is quite similar to the statistics for the Camino de Santiago. In, in 2019, I believe it was something like three and a half, uh, 300,000 people walked on the Camino. But this year, 2021, when I was walking in June, then I didn't see very many people at all. So the issue of the COVID pandemic has changed the numbers of walkers. So on this wall, I have uh, a variety of different artworks. There are um, paintings and woodworks and limited edition prints. So the woodworks are what I call walk texts on wood. So somebody else says, oh yes, these are sculptures. No, 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 these are not sculptures. These are walk texts on wood. So here I have a... Uh, an artwork about um, Mount Kailash in Tibet. And very often people ignore Tibet for some reason. And there will be very clear reasons, but Tibet is not mentioned. But I made the pilgrimage to go to Tibet in order to be able to walk around Mount Kailash. Mount Kailash has a, a path, I've been there twice, once in 2007 and 2011, and in 2007 um, I saw uh, Tibetan pilgrims doing full body prostrations going round the 52 kilometers round Mount Kailash, which takes them two weeks. So um, in one day, uh, on the Camino this, this year, I walked 53 kilometers in the one day, which, is, which sounds a long way, but it's not really a very long way. It's quite straightforward to do. But in the case of this mountain, Mount Kailash, people walked uh, by going full body prostrations. I think three paces, then the body is lying flat, stand up and continue. Very physical, very difficult form of uh, dedicated pilgrim that would uh, manage, would, would be able to do this. So they, they were um, protecting hands, gloves, um, knee pads, uh, apron on the front. So it's quite a very, it's quite a special form of pilgrimage, which for me, is, these were the most impressive pilgrims that I've ever seen in my life. So we live in a time of climate change and climate change is as a result of human activity, the natural living planet would not have created uh, climate change. The climate change uh, is as a result of our behavior, our priorities, and what we think is important. Uh, that is to say, endless production, endless covering of the ground. And so then the earth uh, cannot uh, breathe. And so indigenous peoples, because on the 12th of October, we have the, the day called Indigenous Peoples Day. Originally it was called Columbus Day. Then it became known in more recent years as Indigenous Peoples Day. And it is my belief that it is the wisdom of indigenous peoples that we need to listen to. What we have mostly 
is the issue of um, scientific data from climate scientists, which is very important because they identify the, the heating, the increase in the heat of the planet. But we also need to pay attention to the, to the indigenous peoples, the people who are living uh, continuously in nature, not just on vacation or the weekend, but day and night, every day. They are living on, on the earth, in the ground, in the forest. They're paying attention, they're living with the animals, the birds, the insects. So they have the wisdom, they, they understand um, directly what is happening. For example, the Kogi Indians of Colombia, they, they recognized that there was climate change happening up in the Sierra Madre before they, they knew about it from scientists from, <laughs> from sea level. So, so this work here is related to the issue of climate change, but I made a walk in 1999 in Alaska, and what happened was I was with an alpine guide, and we came to this lake, and what had happened was that the, the glacier at the back had melted, and a hole had melted in the glacier, a bit like pulling a, a plug out of a bath, and all the lake, all of the water in the lake disappeared down through a hole. So that's why these icebergs on the top are just floating now. <laughs> they were on the top floating, now they're on the bottom of the lake. So this is why I call it disappearing lake. So this is to do with uh, climate change. You could say 1999 is quite early, but I think people have known about climate change for a very long time. But now, this year, 2021, we have a lot of volcanic eruptions. Um, there are all kinds of activities going on in the world uh, in the physical uh, sense. In an exhibition dedicated 100% to walking, it's also important to, for me to say that I recognize that there are, are some people who are physically unable to walk. So I recognize that, that they are physically unable to walk. So um, I'm acknowledging um, their lives. So in this work, I, I made a walk which started in Spain from Bilbao. And I walked to uh, the mouth of the, the Rhine, uh, just near to uh, Rotterdam. Um, ending at, at the, the Hook van Holland. So th this was a um, very interesting walk from just from the issue of uh, the point of view, the experience of the distance, uh, 2,838 kilometers. So the, the title, Walking Into the Distance. So the distance is for the, for the person making this walk, it's, it's an incomprehensible distance. So you, you can't understand how far you have to walk. You have no feeling that, other than that it will be a long way. And then beyond imagination. So then the issue is, again, related where your imagination cannot uh, predict, cannot tell you what it's going to be like in the future. So in mountaineering, they call it the outcome must not be assumed. Because in mountaineering, uh, you, you have an adventure. You climb a mountain, uh, and you don't know what the outcome is going to be. If you knew what it was, then, of course, it would not be an adventure. In this a limited edition print, I have um, gone to, with, with commercial guides, to the top of uh, Denali in uh, uh, Alaska, and also to the top of Aconcagua in Argentina. So, um, so these are the two highest points, highest point in the south, highest point in the north. So th it's an artwork about these, these two, two points. Um, so th that these big experiences for me personally, not being a mountaineer, being an artist, a walking artist, big powerful experiences shrunk down into a small limited edition print. Not a huge, great big uh, artwork on the floor, but a small print. In this section of the 
exhibition here at SIGAC in Santiago. I have uh, presented into various um, glass boxes, containers, some of my printed material that I've made over the years, uh, referring to different kinds of walks and also uh, different graphic design layouts. In this particular one here, we have the, the basic headings are um, Chinese economy, Chinese migrant, Tibetan refugee, silence. Th this means that the, the powerful Chinese economy, partly based on Chinese um, migrants going from uh, eastern China to Tibet to uh, make money, to earn a living, to live their lives uh, productively, contributing to the, the economy of the greater, the motherland of China, but it also caused the Tibetan people to have to become refugees and exit and live as refugees in India. And so nobody talks about Tibet. And so what we have is silence. So the Chinese economy pays to keep the whole topic of Tibet very silent. We don't hear about Tibet anymore. We've heard about Taiwan, Hong Kong, Xinjiang. Tibet is missing from this list. This is my opinion. Not everyone agrees. In this uh, one walk that I made in 2005, along the way I encountered, of course, different people and I encountered on this walk, for example, these two shepherds. Both of these older men are shepherds. And they are not landowning shepherds. They are shepherds who are itinerant. And they have maybe, as people in Spain obviously know more than I do from England, but they have maybe small herds of sheep of maybe 60, 70, 80 sheep. And so they, they travel with their sheep. And th this man has... a uh, the donkey, and then here is the mother, and the lamb is feeding from the mother. So this is absolutely, uh, for some people, very, they would say, oh, this is very romantic, very nostalgic, very sentimental. On the other hand, consider the lives of these people. They are not sentimental, nostalgic, or romantic. They're very difficult, very hard. So not everybody today in 2021, that was 2005, but today not everybody wants to be a shepherd. So in, in this photograph here, again, the idea of very romantic, poetic, very poetic, but so because he has his special blanket for the cold when he's still and the sheep are feeding, uh, he has his shepherd's uh, cape, uh, stick for the end for grabbing, pulling the sheep. He has a, a leather bag and um, a container for liquid. And he has one dog, but he had two dogs. So again, th this is just this idea of the difficulty and the hardness of the life of the shepherd in relation to what people would interpret as a very poetic image. So it's just some way to think about how, how uh, how we relate to other people's lives. Because it's very important, the issue of relating to other people's lives. Hmm. All of my art in this gallery space uh, relates to the Camino de Santiago. Um, most of the material in this gallery space relates to the walk that I made this summer, which was mostly in the month of June, um, where there were fewer people walking on the Camino than when I walked at, uh, on two other occasions. Um, and I have one photograph, two, three, four, Four, four photographs from the year 2005. And 
So the, the Camino in 2005 was very different, uh, a very different experience than the experience this year, which was, is uh, impacted by the issue of the COVID pandemic. So for me, it's a, it's a great privilege to be able to make this exhibition here. I feel very fortunate to uh, have had the support from uh, the two museums, Mun in Pamplona and SIGAC here in Santiago. And the, the art in this room, as I say, is, is everything is entirely to do with the, with the Camino. So the name of the exhibition is Walking East. The title Walking East is in no way intended to be offensive to those people walking west. Uh, but in 2005, or 2001, because I also walked in 2001, um, people shouted to me in the English language, wrong way. So th they had the idea that when you are walking east, you're going the wrong way. And yet we may think philosophically that life is a two-way street, sort of give and take freedom. Uh, do you want freedom or, you know, you have your point of view, I have mine? Uh, so it's, it's a philosophical kind of an issue. Uh, and then the Camino also, this is a different point, is also a line. It's a line. It's a one-way line. Where, whereas what I was mentioning upstairs is that the Kailash Kora, um, which Kora is a circumambulation of a sacred site, um, this, this is a circle so that when you arrive uh, at the beginning, this is also where people end the walk, whereas in the case of the Camino, it is a line. And so the, the issue for me is that I want to pay attention, this is my personal feeling about this, that I want to pay attention to nature. I, I, for myself, without wishing to offend anyone, I have no, no reason whatsoever to offend anyone, but I would not want to end um, a walk uh, a pilgrimage walk at, at a human construction. I would want to end at water um, or a mountain or a river. And so this work here, Atlantic Horizons, relates to the fact that I started from Finisterra on a beautiful sunny morning uh, where the sea was a deep blue color. And then I walked, of course, inland no, I no longer am seeing the ocean, I'm seeing land, fields, agriculture. And then I ended in France at Hende, where there is also the Rio Bidassau. And uh, so the horizon then was another horizon of the Atlantic Ocean, and, and the color on that day was gray. So, uh, so that's why we have this uh, the issue of the Atlantic horizons. So from one point at the beginning, then all, all land horizons, then the last horizon is again the Atlantic horizon. So it's important for me to uh, identify the fact that I did not print these photographs. Manuel Serra in Barcelona printed these photographs, not myself. I, I, I'm only the person who went click. I selected a view, operated a camera, but I didn't print the photograph. So, but at the same time, I, I don't consider myself a landscape photographer. I carry a camera and photograph the view ahead, the road ahead, um, as a sort of, maybe you might think of it as a kind of evidence of having made the walk. Because people, w they will be able to identify these three hills. In this photograph behind this man here, who I encountered, he was walking that way west, and I'm walking this way east in 2005. One, two, three hills. In fact, you can't see them, but there are four hills. But these three hills, 2005, are the same as these three hills, 2021. So the title here is Clouds. You say, well, that's very obvious, there are the clouds. But 
the clouds are worth paying attention to. The weather is worth paying attention to. Um, clouds, unlike a marble sculpture or a metal sculpture, a stone sculpture, they are continuously changing shape. This work um, shows the village of a small town of Castro Jerez on the Camino. This is the Camino, and the Camino goes this way. Then, after Castro Jerez, then I walk down this road here in 2021, and then backwards in time, 2005, the same road but at a different point on the road. So I just end by saying that I really appreciate this opportunity to make an exhibition as a walking artist in this building, SIGAC in Santiago, um, in relation to the proximity of the Camino de Santiago. But I'm a walking artist, I, I'm not a, a pilgrim. So that for me, these walks on the Camino are, are my walks on the, on the, as it were, the location of the Camino. I did not make a Camino pilgrimage. But I respect, it's very important to say that I absolutely respect everybody who makes this walk on the Camino, coming to Santiago, and, and they, in their minds they are on a pilgrimage. But I'm, I'm just an artist who's um, working within this kind of proximity of the Camino itself. Uh, and so it is a great privilege for me to be able to have this opportunity to uh, make an exhibition here in, in Santiago and SIGAC. Thank you. So it's all in silence, okay? Inside. And we start when the when the bells start. Yes, really? Yes.
ugye ott szeretett volna. Az, hogy állsz. 